All right, family, come on, let's stand one more time for the reading of God's word today. Make some noise if you love Jesus in the house. Anybody thankful that this is Thanksgiving week? Come on now, look at your neighbor and say, calories are free this week. Calories are free. Anybody agree with me? These are holy, sanctified calories this week. So thankful. So th- anybody thankful for real, though? Anybody thankful? So grateful. Anybody, anybody thankful to be in church this morning? Come on now. So anybody thankful for Jesus today? Amen. Let's get our Bibles out and turn, if you would, please, to Revelation, Revelation chapter 1. And we're also going to go to Revelation chapter 3. And if you're new to the Bible, it's uh, the very back part of the book and it's in the book called Revelation so if you'll find chapter 1 we're going to be right there and and so get your notes and get your Bibles ready and I want to say hello to some people who were online with us this morning got an amazing online campus worshiping with us locally and around the region and literally around the world and we're grateful for that and just want to shout out to a couple of people that are on with us want to say hello to I think it's Camille um, unless it's Camille hey Camille and or Con- and Connor's with us, and Jill. We've got people in Hickory, North Carolina, and Lexington, Kentucky, and so many more. Come on, Avenue, help me welcome our online campus today. Come on, make some noise for them. We love you. Y'all interact with our team there during this service, and whether you're watching live or watching back, we love you so much. And so we're concluding our series today that we've called Blueprints. Anybody been enjoying this series? It's been tough, I know, but we need it, right? We- It's the truth that sets us free, right? And so we've been looking into the seven churches in Revelation that Jesus addresses. And these these churches are models, plans, blueprints, if you will, for us as believers to live by today. Today. Five of them get rebuked along with some encouragement. And only two of them receive no rebukes. And so let's look at our theme scripture real quick. Revelation chapter 1, 9 through 11 says, I, John, which was one of the disciples, the other 11, um, well, one of them, we know what happened with Judas, but they added another one, and they, they, they murdered them for their faith in Christ. This is after the resurrection of Jesus, and they'd been preaching the gospel of Jesus, and so they murdered the rest of them, sent John, and exiled him to an island, and the Lord showed up to him and gave us a lot of things for the end times, and here's one of the things that he spoke to us. He says, I, John, this is John talking, your brother and companion in the suffering and kingdom and patient endurance that are ours in Jesus was on the island of Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. On the Lord's day, I was in the spirit and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet and Jesus shows up and speaks to him and says, which said, write on a scroll what you see and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. So today we're going to end with the last two, which is Philadelphia and Laodicea. And I've titled this message, if you're taking notes, write this down real quick. Here's the title, Someone's at the Door. I'm going to look at your neighbor and say, knock, knock. knock, knock. I don't have a joke for you. I just wanted you to. <laughs> I, could, I could run off some dad jokes for you, but I won't. I won't. Someone's at the door. Come on, look around some people in your area and say, someone's here, someone's here, someone's here. Let's pray together. Let's also pray for another church like we always do. The church I want to pray for today is, is Powerhouse Baptist Church. They're, they're celebrating 75 years of ministry today. And so, yeah, come on, we praise God for that. That's so good. That's so good. So let's, let's pray together and pray for them. Father, thank you so much for the day. God, thank you for what this week represents. And Lord, it's not, it's, it's more than just a meal with the family. Lord, it's a time for us to say thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us. God, you are good and you are faithful. And we worship you today. Thank you that we have the freedom in this country to be able to celebrate like we will this week, Lord. And I thank you for the power of the church and the power of the word. And Lord, we just lift up the Powerhouse Baptist Church to you today with Pastor Fletcher and Ashley Porter. Lord, as they celebrate 75 years of your goodness and your faithfulness. And I pray, Lord, that you would breathe a fresh wind and fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit into their church and in their lives. Bless the man and woman of God. Encourage them and strengthen them and continue to use them. Lord, let them be a powerhouse in the kingdom to advance the gospel of Jesus. Bless them is our prayer today. God, thank you for this house and what you're doing here. Thank you for every person 
in this auditorium and with us online. God, we open our hearts to you through the power of your life-giving, life-changing word in Jesus' name. And somebody shout a big amen. 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 You may be seated. Someone's at the door. Have you ever had an unwelcomed or unwanted guest show up at your house? Am I in the right? I mean, y'all want everybody to come to your house? No, you don't. You lie. You're in church. You, you, ever, you ever had somebody show up, show up at your house unexpected, or maybe it was like a, a salesman or, or whatever, somebody walking in the neighborhood or, or whatever, whatever it is, like, you, you know, just they knock on your door and you weren't expecting anybody? How many of you have ever acted like there's nobody home? Raise your hand. The rest of y'all are lying. Everybody else is honest. Y'all are going to heaven. The rest of y'all? The doorbell rings or somebody knocks on the door. You weren't expecting nobody? Nope, I ain't home. Shh, mute the TV. Nobody move. Y'all been there? Come on. Someone, someone's at the door. Look at your neighbor and say, somebody's at the door. Someone's at the door. I've got good news for you. We, we get to start off today with a church that receives no rebukes. Somebody say, thank God. That's the church of Philadelphia. Revelation chapter 3, let's read it. Revelation chapter 3, verse 7 through 13 To the angel of the church in Philadelphia, right, this is what Jesus says, these are the words of him, he's talking about himself, who is holy and true, who holds the key of David. Somebody say the key of David. What he opens, no one can shut. And what he shuts, no one can open. I know your deeds. See, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. I know that you have little strength. Somebody say little strength. Yet you have kept my word. Somebody say keep the word. And have not denied my name. I will make those who are of the synagogue of Satan, who claim to be Jews, though they are not, but are liars. I will make them come and fall down at your feet and acknowledge that I have loved you. Since you have kept my command, there's the key. Since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come on the whole world to test the inhabitants of the earth. And there's a lot there to talk about end times and and tribulation and all that that we're not going to have time to get into today, but there's some deep, deep stuff and good stuff there. I'm coming soon, he says. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take your crown. The one who is victorious, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. Never again will they leave it. I will write it. I will write on them the name of my God, the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which is coming down out of heaven from my God. And I will also write on them my new name. Come on now. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Anybody want to be on the receiving end of what he just said? Can can I help you know how to do that? Can we talk about it today? Come on, 930. Y'all with me today? Let's let's, let's dive in. The, The word Philadelphia means brotherly love. Brotherly love. Philadelphia receives no rebukes, only praise. Philadelphia is a faithful church. They they did not deny Christ. They endured opposition from from society and culture. They did not conform to ungodly trends. Anybody see that in our world today? They remained loyal to Jesus and to the truth of his word. And here's the result for them. They got to live under an open heaven. Sound good to anybody? I want to live under an open heaven. So because of the praise that Jesus gives the church of Philadelphia, we need to model ourselves after this church. So let's let's dive into this church and learn some things. I'll give you three things for Philadelphia. Number one, write this down. God is looking for a church who will close the door on pride. God is looking for a church who will close the door on pride. Verse 7, to the angel of the church of Philadelphia, right? These are the ones of the words of him who is holy and true, who holds the key of David. What he opens, no one can shut, and what he shuts, no one can open. So, who and what is he talking about right here? He's referring to the kingdom of David, and he's also referring to the kingdom of God. He's referring actually to Isaiah chapter 22, when there was a man, there was an evil man by the name of Shebna. Somebody say Shebna. Come on, say Shebna. Shebna was entrusted with the keys to the palace. He was second in command to the king. And he was using his position of authority to keep people out of the kingdom. Are you with me, church? And in verse 20 through 22, the Lord says, In that day I will summon my servant Eliakim, son of Hilkiah. I will clothe him with your robe. 
Shebna and fasten your sash Shebna around him and hand your authority over to him. He will be a father to those who live in Jerusalem and to the people of Judah. I will place on his shoulder the king, the key of the house of David. What he opens, no one can shut, and what he shuts, no one can open. Shebna will no longer have the key. Big deal, Pastor Jay. It's a big deal. Eliakim will now have the key, and he will now have access to all that is available. Come on, that's prophetic to us because in the New Testament the Pharisees they thought they had the control and they kept people out of the kingdom they tried to decide who was allowed to come in and who could go out they made it impossible for people to experience the kingdom of God because of all their rules and all of their religion and that's exactly what religious people do they're more concerned about who they can keep out instead of finding ways to get people in They're more concerned about what you can and what you cannot do in church instead of whatever it takes just to get people to church. They're more concerned about looking like a church instead of doing all they can do to be the church. Ah, So God sent Jesus to take the keys out of the hands of the religious Pharisees and God placed those keys in the hands of Jesus to give everyone access to the kingdom of God. And so Jesus comes along and says in Matthew 16, 19, if you'll put your faith in me and declare my name, I will give you the keys of the kingdom and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Come on, church. Jesus holds the key, and he's sharing them with us. And because Jesus has the key, you have access to everything heaven has available because of Jesus. Come on, put it up there. If heaven has it, baby, you can have it. And I've come to tell somebody, we worship the one who holds the key. And because he holds the key, we have access to the kingdom. The kingdom of God is not about what you've done. The kingdom is not about where you've been, but it's all about who you know. God's not looking for ways to keep you out. He sent Jesus to get the key as the way to get you in. And now you have access to God all because of Jesus. Come on. High five your neighbor and tell him Jesus holds the key. Jesus holds the key. Sorry, I didn't mean to get excited too early. Jesus holds the key. Jesus The Messiah, the Holy One, holds the key. And the Lord says in verse 8, I know your deeds, Philadelphia. See, I've placed before you an open door that no one can shut. I know that you have little strength, yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. Does anybody want to stand in front of a door that no one else can shut? Because the Lord is opening that door for you. Let me me help you understand how. A person who has little strength. It means someone who has no strength left in them. But they have the strength of God. The words little strength used here in the Greek is the words mikros dunamis. It means micro power. It sounds like Jesus is insulting this church. The reason why God placed an open door before them that no one could shut is because Philadelphia recognized that their strength did not come from themselves, but it came from God. In their weakness, God's strength was made perfect. They knew they were nothing without God. They couldn't make it without God. They couldn't go on without God. And God is looking for a church who will close the door on pride. Uh You get a little... Success under your belt and you stop relying on God. We get a raise or promotion and we stop tithing. Talk to me 930. It was easy to tithe when you didn't make a lot. But when God blessed your life, that tithe got bigger. You forgot where that blessing came from. We get acknowledged and we get too important to keep serving. We, you, you accomplish some goals in life and you forget that God is the one who strengthened you to begin with. You see miracles happen. We see people saved. You see people healed. You see people set free. And we grow numb to the fact that God did it all. 
And you think that you had something to do with it. And somehow we think that if, if we weren't here, then God couldn't move and work in people's lives. But a church who knows that they have but a little strength does not mean that they're weak. It just means that they understand that there's only so much they can do in the natural. And it's only God who can show up and do the supernatural. Oh. Psalm 46 and 10 says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations and I will be exalted in the earth. And the words be still used here in the Hebrew is the word Rapha, not to be confused with Rapha, our healer. It means to grow slack, to sink down, to let go and move to a lower position. Be still, he says, move to a lower position. Why? Because God will be exalted. He's the one who will be lifted high. And God is looking for some people who will acknowledge his power, a church who will close the door on pride and walk in humility and rejoice in being a church of little strength. It wasn't us who saved people. It's him. It wasn't us who made a way when there seemed to be none. It was him. He's the one who delivered. He's the one who came through. He's the one that restored the broken marriage. He's the one who healed. He's the one who redeemed. He's the one who's worthy. He's the only one who made the avenue what it is today and he's the one who will help us build a church that will change the world for generations to come and God's looking for a church who will give him all the glory and give him all the honor and give him the praise that he rightly deserves. It doesn't mean that we're worthless. It just means that we know her place. If we'll close the door on pride, God's about to put some super to our natural. He's about to put some extra on our ordinary and take us to a whole nother level. Come on, Avenue. Close the door on pride so we can live under an open heaven. Come on. Somebody shout a big amen. amen. Come on, touch two people and tell them, shut the door, baby. Shut the door. Shut the door. Shut the door. Shut the door. Come on online, talk to me. Shut the door. Are we all right? Yeah. Shut the door. Shut the door. Here's the second thing we need to learn from Philadelphia. Number two, write this down. God is looking for a church who will close the door on compromise. Oh, pastor, you already preached on compromise during this series. Well, I'm going to do it again. Verse 8, I know that you have little strength, yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. I want to live under an open heaven. Close the door on pride and close the door on compromise. You have kept my word. The word kept used here in the Greek is the word tereo. It means guarded. Hey, Melissa. It means protected. It means fulfilled. It means maintained. And the Lord told me to restore honor for his presence among the people. And that's exactly what I intend to do, whether anyone likes it or not, whether social media in the Lakeway region likes it or not, whether living in Morristown likes it or not, I will restore honor for God's presence in his house. Pastor, did you hear what they said about you on living in Morristown? Nope, don't care. Don't care. Don't care. They don't like your church. Don't care. Don't care. God, they don't like me on living in Morristown. Psalm 119, 11. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. 2 Timothy 3, 16, all scripture is breathed out by God and is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. And I've come to tell somebody that this is God's word and we should live by it. But here's the problem we have in our world today. We have Christians and churches who are opening the door for compromise. We've got churches who now say that you can accept Christ as Savior and still live however you want. We've got Christians and churches who not only say that a homosexual lifestyle is acceptable, they'll put a gay pastor in their pulpit and let him call himself holy. We've got pastors living a hypocritical, pathetical lifestyle, pathetic lifestyle, and then get up on a Sunday morning to stand behind what's called a holy pulpit to use their platform only hoping to go viral. We've got churches giving motivational speeches without ever even teaching about scripture. We've got a nation full of Christians and churches who've gotten so far away from the word of God that they've become nothing but a bunch of lukewarm social clubs. 
Put this up here. We've become so concerned about being relevant that we've compromised and stopped producing real life change. New Slash Avenue, I'm all about being relevant, relevant, but not at the expense of losing revelation that's found only in the Word of God. Hey, Avenue, we've got to close the door on compromise in our churches again. And the reason why some of us are struggling in our faith walk is because we haven't fully turned from sin. You're compromising, trying to see how much of the world you can have and still make it to heaven. It's why some of us still drink. It's why some of us still party. It's why some of us are still looking at porn. It's why some of us are still living wild. It's why some of us are still addicted to drugs. It's why you're still bitter and prideful and judging and unforgiving. You haven't fully repented. You've just been sorry. And if you're not careful, you're going to be sorry for all eternity because you're going to gain so much of the world that you're going to miss out on heaven. Oh, I can't speak for other churches and I can't speak for other pastors, but as the pastor of the Avenue Church, I've come to put us on notice today. We will follow the blueprints of Philadelphia and we will close the door on compromise and we will keep his word. I need to tell your area, we will keep his word. We will keep his, come on online, talk to me. We will keep his word. So honey, don't get it twisted because of the building. Don't get it twisted because of the parking lot. We're building it, baby. But we're actually building a church on the word of God. I'm feeling preachy. Don't get it twisted because of the big stage. And don't get it twisted because of the lights. And don't get it twisted because of the screens. And don't get it twisted because of the fog. And don't get it twisted because of the creativity. Like the hope this Christmas to present the gospel. Those are all just methods. Oh my, oh my goodness. Hey, look, look where you're sitting. Look where you're sitting. Physically. Look where you're sitting. It's about to mess you up. It's not a pew. Look to the right. Your left. Look to your right. This is no knock on it. That's not a stained glass window. No knock on it. They're beautiful. We used them on our screen during this worship set. I'm not messing you up. You, you've got a giving platform on the back of your seat instead of a hymnal. Come here. Who do you think you are? Got to put yourself on a screen. Come here. <laughs> Hello, online world. I'm so thankful for you. I don't care to see myself. We just want you out there to know how much we love you and let you come on in and experience what God is doing in the place called the house of God. Hey. Can I tell you, it's not the padded seat and it's not the pew where the glory hits. It's not the wall and it's not the stained glass window where the glory is. It's not the giving platform or the hymnal where the glory is. But the glory shows up where two or three are gathered in my name and I wish I could find some people who just want to show up in a place where Jesus will be with them also. I got I to gotta go back. I got to go back. So don't get it twisted. Pastor, you're against pews. and You just missed the whole thing I just said. No. If you want stained glass windows, praise God. But that's not my God. I'm going to stay right here. Those are all just, why aren't you in a suit and tie? (laughs) 
It's real easy. I don't like them. That's it. Can I tell you? It's not the tie that makes me anointed. It's not the suit that makes me anointed. It's not a comb over that makes me anointed. It's me hitting my knees when nobody else is around. It's me fasting and praying in my prayer closet and calling on Jesus. I don't care what I've got home, but I've come to lift tie the name of Jesus. If you want to wear a suit, rock that bad boy. I'll be like, dang. Those are all just methods. All of that is just a method. Somebody shout method. Even though we will always use new methods, we must never stray from the original message or we will be worthless and powerless. At the Avenue Church, we will keep his word because it's the truth of God's word that changes people's lives. What's the word, Pastor Jay? I'm glad you want to know, baby. The blood of Jesus that worked 2,000 years ago is still the blood that works today. The blood that was poured out on the cross of Jesus to the forgiveness of mankind still forgives today. I've come to shout it out it's still the blood that saves it's still the blood that sets free it's still the blood that heals it's still the blood that restores it's still the blood of Jesus that changes everything and we will not compromise his word slap somebody and tell him we'll keep his word we'll keep his word we'll keep his word I got to get five minutes back somewhere are we all right? I just offended about 75 of you. You'll be all right. Here's the third thing. God's looking for a church who will close the door on selfishness. God's looking for a church who will close the door on selfishness. Verse 8, I know that you have little strength. You have kept my word and you have not denied my name. Have not denied my name. The church of Philadelphia faced some tough days. They experienced persecution and loss. They could have spared their lives and they could have spared their families if they had just denied knowing Jesus. The reason why you would deny Jesus is because you acknowledge yourself too much. Second Timothy 3, 1 through 5. Pastor, you preached this last week. I'm going to read it again. But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient, their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, selfish, having a form of godliness but denying its power, have nothing to do with such people. They will be lovers of themselves. They, they will keep the door of selfishness Open selfishness, church, is not kingdom minded. Come on, put it up there. If you're selfish, you're not about the kingdom, you're more interested in becoming king. If you're selfish, you need to understand that you're going to miss your opportunity to receive what God has for your life. We don't have time for selfishness. We don't have time for glory hogs. We don't have time for platform pushers. I want people to hear me, and I want people to see me, and I want people to acknowledge me. And Why should I serve? What's in it for me? Why should I sacrifice? What's in it for me? Why should I give? What's in it for me? Come on, Avenue. We're not building a church about Justin. We're not building a church about Melissa. We're we're not building a church about you. Our church is not for us. We exist for the world. Come on, put it up there. Our church is not for us. We exist for the world. We're building a church where it's all about Jesus. Come on, somebody shout Jesus. Jesus. Newsflash. At the avenue, we will not even attempt to make this thing about us. We exist to show the world who Jesus is and invite them to experience his love and hope. We're here to make the name of Jesus famous to the entire world. Philippians chapter 2, 9 through 11 says, Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. That at the name of, come on, shout it out. Jesus. 
Every knee should bow in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. At the avenue, it's always been Jesus. It still is Jesus, and it will always be about Jesus. We will never be selfish and deny that name. Oh, come on. Where are the ones at the avenue church who will close the door on selfishness and help me lift high the name of Jesus? Oh, come on. That's a good place for an avenue praise break and lift high the name of Jesus. Woo! Come on, high five your whole zip code and tell them it's all about Jesus. It's all about, it's all about Jesus. I, I feel like Peter. I feel like Peter when he responded. If you haven't noticed... This world is a crazy place. It doesn't seem to be getting any better. And it's almost like I can hear the Holy Spirit say, like he said to the disciples, are you going to leave too? Are you going to be prideful too? Are you going to compromise too? Are you going to be selfish too? And I feel like Peter, when he responded, where else would I go? For you're the one who holds the key. To the kingdom. Oh, I wish I could find a church who would say, even when I'm weak, I'm leaning on Jesus. Till the day I die, I'm leaning on Jesus. When the world loses its way, I will preach Jesus. When other people turn their back, I will trust in Jesus. And God is saying, I'm going to place you under an open heaven. And I'm going to pour out my spirit and my blessing on you. Why? Because you relied on me. And because you stayed true to me and my word. And I've been placed on a prophetic assignment to tell the avenue church if we'll follow these blueprints we're about to step into a season of the supernatural we're about to step into a season of the extraordinary he's opening the door of miracles he's opening the door of breakthrough he's opening the door of favor he's opening a door of freedom he's positioning the avenue church to live under an open heaven come on if you believe it that's a good place to give God some praise today Come on, somebody shout, someone's at the door. Let me move on to our last one. The last of the seven churches, the church of Laodicea. Laodicea, Revelation chapter 3. Are we all right? Revelation chapter 3, verse 14 through 22. It says, to the angel of the church in Laodicea write, these are the words of the amen, the faithful and true witness, the ruler of God's creation. I know your deeds That you are neither cold nor hot. Oh, Lord, help us. I wish you were either one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. You say, Laodicea, I'm rich. I've acquired wealth and do not need a thing. But you do not realize that you are actually wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so you can become rich. And white clothes to wear. Why is he saying all this? So you can cover your shameful nakedness and salve to put on your eyes so you can see. If you're with me, say, I'm with you. Those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. So be earnest and repent. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. And if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person. And they with me, to the one who is victorious, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne. Just as I was victorious and sat down with my father on his throne. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Just one point right here. Number one, write this down. God is looking for a church who will open the door for Jesus and go all in with him. God is looking for a church who will open the door for Jesus and go all in with him. Now pay attention here. Laodicea was a wealthy center of business and trade. In fact, they were the wealthiest of the seven churches. Come on, stay with me. And this prosperity led the church to become spiritually complacent. The last and the worst 
of all the seven churches. The other churches that receive rebukes, they get some encouragement and praise as well. But Laodicea is the one and only church who receives nothing but rebukes. They look good on the outside, but they were spiritually filthy on the inside. Let me work this thing in reverse. Verse 18, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so you can become rich and white clothes to wear so you can cover your shameful nakedness and salve to put on your eyes so you can see. Laodicea was very wealthy but wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. They had money but lacked spiritual wealth. Laodicea was a producer of wool, particularly black wool, and this church was full of spiritual darkness. Laodicea was also known for having medicine that could cure eye problems, but this church was called spiritually blind. So Jesus says in verse 15, I know your deeds that you're neither hot nor cold. I wish you were either one or the other, so because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. And, and we read that, and we think, well, get on fire for God or get out. Because if you're in the middle, you make God sick. But can we take a little deeper look at this thing today? Come on, church. Even though they had all this wealth, Laodicea had a water problem. It lacked an it lacked an, uh, an adequate water supply. It had to get their water miles away by using an aqueduct system. You still with me? The hot water came from hot springs in Hierapolis from the north. The cold water came from Colossae that was clean and refreshing. But because the hot and cold water had to travel six miles in an aqueduct system, it became lukewarm. And by the time it got to Laodicea, it was lukewarm, unclean, and undrinkable. And it would make you sick. I got any coffee drinkers? Where, where are the coffee drinkers who... No, no, hold on. I know you're, I know you're excited. Hang on. You've had a lot of coffee already. Where, where are the coffee drinkers who are old school and you're like, just give me a straight black cup of coffee? Yeah. <laughs> and so where are the rest of you who like the idea of coffee, but you have to doctor that bad boy up with like five pounds of sugar and cream? Now, yeah, there you go. Okay. <laughs> like your coffee looks more like a milkshake than it does coffee <laughs> like on a morning like today when it's cold you I, I'm not a coffee fan I love the smell I don't like the taste but I, I love the smell all day long whatever but uh, you, you love that you love the coffee in the morning when it's cold because man it, like feels good in your hands and it's like the best part of waking up <laughs> is falls just in your cup Woo! Some of y'all are not the Folgers. You're like frou-frou. But you like that. You like to smell it. and You, just lo you love all of it, right? Like you're not, you don't wake up until you get that cup of coffee, right? Now, now I'm not talking about, like when I say this, I'm not talking about like there are iced coffee. Where you, and that's different. But like if you've doctored up a cup of coffee. And I said, here you go. Here's a cup of coffee. It's from yesterday. You'd be like, nah, I'm good. Especially if you've doctored that thing up. You open it up and it's questionable. It's grown stuff. It's There's nothing comforting about that cup of coffee. And vice versa, on a, on a hotter day, well, I would do milkshakes 30 below, but the refreshing part of a milkshake that you enjoy I'm not, this is not a knock, okay, on this restaurant. If you've ever seen a McDonald's milkshake that's been sitting for a while, it's, 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 there's a molecular miracle that takes place. It shrinks and it turns into like styrofoam. It's weird. It's like, it's like, just, 
It's like foamy. It's no longer, it really doesn't even look like liquid anymore. It's just like, what is that, right? There's nothing refreshing. I would not want, this has been out for hours now. There's no way, what was dairy? Is scary. <laughs> and there's nothing, there's nothing refreshing about that. Right? If it's been sitting for a while, it's supposed to be hot and it's nothing but just, mm. It's supposed to be cold, been sitting a while, it's nothing but, mm, just in the middle. Come on now. That's what he's talking about. So some of us read the scripture and go, why did he get on fire? Well, you're kind of misinterpreting a little bit what it's actually saying. Here's why this is significant. The water wasn't hot enough to be used for medicinal purposes or for teas or for soothing. And it wasn't cold enough to be refreshing when you're thirsty. And Laodicea had become lukewarm in their faith, causing them to be distasteful. Come on, put it up there. And disgusting. That They didn't take a stand for anything. They didn't do anything for Christ. They had become hard-hearted and self-centered. They didn't need help from hell to destroy themselves. It was destroying itself. See, a lukewarm church is complacent regarding their personal commitment to Christ. A lukewarm church is half-hearted and lazy in their service to God and in the church. A lukewarm church compromises in their faith by behaving like and resembling more like the world than it does the kingdom of God. They were wretched and pitiful. They were no better off than someone who is without Christ. A letter to the church. They were naked because they were no longer clothed with the power of the Holy Spirit or with the purity of God. They were blind because their pathetic spiritual condition left them with no vision to see how they could actually be changing the world. So check this. God is saying in the last days there will be churches who aren't hot enough to provide healing to the hurting. And they won't be cold enough to be refreshing to the weary. And God says you have all these resources but you're useless and you make me sick. But if you'll repent you'll know longer be lukewarm and you'll help he'll actually help you discover your real value he'll turn your spiritual darkness into white with righteousness and he'll provide salve to, that will heal your spiritual eyes to give you your vision back you want to know why God has led me to do this series can I tell you to make sure that we never become lukewarm and if you are I've come to shake out of you your spiritual complacency I've come to fan the flame with the power of the Holy Spirit hot or cold is the issue if we're hot we can heal the hurting if we're cold we can refresh the weary but if we're lukewarm we're disgusting and useless come on family If you don't want to be lukewarm, will you stand up on your feet right now and give God praise because you're in a place where we believe that you should be hot or cold so you can provide healing or refreshing. Come on, somebody give God a shout of praise. Come on, high five somebody and tell them we will not be lukewarm. Just stay standing with me. And God is speaking to us today. Open the door to Jesus and go all in with Him. Because if you're not all in, then yeah, you're all out. And I really believe, I believe God is looking for places in our nation. I believe that God is looking for churches in our nation. I believe that God is looking for a people in our nation. He's looking for a church who wants to go all in with Him regardless of what it costs them. Am I in the right house? He's looking for a church who can provide healing to the hurting and refreshing to the weary. I want to be a church that's not somewhere in the middle so that whoever walks through those doors, we can provide healing to what's caused the pain. I want to be a church that can provide the weary soul a refreshing drink of the living water. But if we're lukewarm, we're nothing.
Here's a big idea. We will be a church and a people who will do whatever it takes to host the presence of God. Why? Because it's His power and it's His presence that changes everything and everyone. Knock, knock. Someone's at the door. Come on. Can we allow Him to come on in? Come on. This is His church anyways. Come on, somebody look up and say, come on in. Sing that. I just... Come on, is that our prayer, church? Nothing else, nothing else. Woo. Can, 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 we, can we make that song just a, a dedication, just a moment as a church? Yeah. Is, is this, are, are we going to be a lukewarm church? You know who that's up to? Yeah. Hey, here, here's, here's the deal. Here, here's, mm. touch your neighbor and say, someone's at the door. Look, look, at this, look at this last verse. Can you, can you bring it back? Can you bring it back to verse 20? If you can't, it's okay, I got it. Verse 20, he says, here I am. This is Jesus. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I'll come in and eat with that person and they with me. Ah, you, you know what Jesus is saying right here? Hey, I just, I just want to know you. I just want to know you. He's not, he's not knocking at the door. And guess what? He's not going to just barge his way in. He's not going to kick the door down. The latch is on the inside. He's saying, I'll eat with that person and that person with me because that's what relationship's all about. Come on now. That's what relationship is all about. Y'all all right? You're with me, right? Please don't miss heaven because you thought it was about a religion. Please don't hear these words and leave unchanged. It takes a relationship with the Lord. And I just believe that he's, he's here today knocking on somebody's heart. Yeah. Hey, can I come in? I just want to change your life. I, I just want to have a relationship with you. I just want to know you. I love you. Please. And, it, and, if, and if you don't want to miss heaven, hey, come on. Open the door. <laughs> open, open the door. It'll be the best decision you could ever make. So with every head bowed, every eye closed all over this house, every head bowed, all, every eye closed all over this house, if, if that's you, if, if you're here today and you, you'd be honest with me, honest with God, honest with yourself and say, Pastor Justin, include me in that prayer. I feel the Lord knocking on my heart. I want to give him everything and let him come on in. Maybe you have a long time ago and maybe you've drifted away from God and today's a recommitment for you. Come on, will you fling wide that door open and just let the King of Glory come in and, and love on you and work on that relationship so you don't miss heaven. I'm going to count to three, and if that's you, I just want to pray with you right there where you're standing. I'm going to count to three. I want to pray with you right there where you're standing. When I get to three, if that's you, just lift that hand up just so I know who I'm praying with today. You say, Pastor Justin, include me in that prayer. I'm opening the door today. Come on, one. Come on, two. All over this house, if that's you. Three, lift up that hand. Yeah, I see you. Keep it up. Yeah, I see you. I see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Keep that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I praise God. I see you back there. Yeah. Yeah, praise God. Several, several hands. Several hands. Heads, heads bowed, eyes closed. Heads bowed, eyes closed. All of you who raised that hand just now, I want you to pray this with me from your heart and from your mouth. I want you to say, Jesus, I need you. 
I'm lost without you. Thank you for loving me. I hear the door. I'm opening it to you. Thank you for waiting on me. Thank you for loving me. Jesus, I confess, you are Lord. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my life. And from this day forward, I'm not running from you. I'm running to you because you're my Savior and you love me. In Jesus' name, come on, somebody shout a big amen. Come on, Avenue, somebody give God some praise. If this message spoke to you today and you took your next step of making a decision to know Christ, we want to celebrate with you and walk this out with you. Simply click the link in the comments below and a pastor will reach out to you and celebrate the greatest decision you have ever made. At The Avenue, we know that we're stronger together, everyone matters, and you belong here.